Whilst he lay there, the people came and inspected him on all sides, and read on his girdle, Seven at one stroke! Ah! said they. What does the great warrior want here in the midst of peace? He must be a mighty lord! They went and announced him to the king, and gave it as their opinion that if war should break out, this would be a weighty and useful man who ought on no account to be allowed to depart. The council pleased the king, and he sent one of his courtiers to the little tailor to offer him military service when he awoke. The ambassador remained standing by the sleeper, waited until he stretched his limbs and opened his eyes, and then conveyed to him this proposal. For this very reason have I come here, the tailor replied. I am ready to enter the king's service. He was therefore honourably received, and a special dwelling was assigned him. The soldiers, however, were set against the little tailor, and wished him a thousand miles away. What is to be the end of this? they said among themselves. If we quarrel with him, and he strikes about him, seven of us will fall at every blow. Not one of us can stand against him. They came, therefore, to a decision, betook themselves in a body to the king, and begged for their dismissal. We are not prepared, said they, to stay with a man who kills seven at one stroke. The king was sorry that for the sake of one he should lose all his faithful servants, wished that he had never set eyes on the tailor, and would willingly have been rid of him again. But he did not venture to give him his dismissal, for he dreaded lest he should strike him and all his people dead, and place himself on the royal throne. He thought about it for a long time, and at last found good counsel. He sent to the little tailor, and caused him to be informed that as he was a great warrior, he had one request to make to him. In a forest of his country lived two giants, who caused great mischief with their robbing, murdering, ravaging, and burning, and no one could approach them without putting himself in danger of death. If the tailor conquered and killed these two giants, he would give him his only daughter to wife, and half of his kingdom as a dowry. Likewise, one hundred horsemen should go with him to assist him. That would indeed be a fine thing for a man like me thought the little tailor. One is not offered a beautiful princess and half a kingdom every day of one's life. Oh, yes, he replied. I will soon subdue the giants, and do not require the help of the hundred horsemen to do it. He who can hit seven with one blow has no need to be afraid of two. The little tailor went forth, and the hundred horsemen followed him. When he came to the outskirts of the forest, he said to his followers, Just stay waiting here. I alone will soon finish off the giants. Then he bounded into the forest and looked about right and left. After a while, he perceived both giants. They lay sleeping under a tree and snored so that the branches waved up and down. The little tailor, not idle, gathered two pockets full of stones and with these climbed up the tree. When he was halfway up, he slipped down by a branch, then he sat just above the sleepers, and then let one stone after another fall onto the breast of one of the giants. For a long time, the giant felt nothing, but at last he awoke, pushed his comrade, and said, Why are you knocking me? You must be dreaming, said the other. I am not knocking you. They laid themselves down to sleep again, and then the tailor threw a stone down on the second. What is the meaning of this? cried the other. Why are you pelting me? I am not pelting you, answered the first growling. They disputed about it for a time. But as they were weary, they let the matter rest, and their eyes closed once more. The little tailor began his game again, picked out the biggest stone, 
and threw it with all his might on the breast of the first giant. That is too bad, cried he, and sprang up like a madman, and pushed his companion against the tree until it shook. The other paid him back in the same coin, and they got into such a rage that they tore up trees and belaboured each other so long that at last they both fell down dead on the ground at the same time. Then the little tailor leapt down. It is a lucky thing, said he, that they did not tear up the tree on which I was sitting, or I should have had to sprint on to another like a squirrel. But we tailors are nimble. He drew out his sword and gave each of them a couple of thrusts in the breasts, and then went out to the horsemen and said, The work is done. I have finished both of them off. But it was hard work. They tore up trees in their sore need and defended themselves with them. But all that is to no purpose when a man like myself comes, who can kill seven at one blow. But are you not wounded? asked the horseman. Ah, you need not concern yourself about that answered the tailor. They have not bent one hair of mine. The horsemen would not leave him, and rode into the forest. There they found the giants swimming in their blood, and all round about lay the torn-up trees. The little tailor demanded of the king the promised reward. He, however, repented of his promise, and again bethought himself how he could get rid of this hero. Bef for you receive my daughter and the half of my kingdom, said he to him, you must perform one more heroic deed. In the forest roams a unicorn which does great harm, and you must catch it first. I fear one unicorn is still less than two giants. Seven at one blow is my kind of affair. He took a rope and an axe with him, went forth into the forest, and again bade those who were sent with him to wait outside. He had not long to seek. The unicorn soon came towards him and rushed directly onto the tailor as if it would gore him with his horn without more ado. Softly, softly, it can't be done as quickly as that, said he, and stood still and waited until the animal was quite close and then sprang nimbly behind the tree. The unicorn ran against the tree with all its strength and stuck its horn so fast in the trunk that it had not the strength enough to draw it out again, and thus it was caught. Now I have got the bird, said the tailor, and came out from behind the tree and put the rope round its neck, and then with his axe he hewed the horn out of the tree. And when all was ready, he led the beast away and took it to the king. The king still would not give him the promised reward and made a third demand. Before the wedding, the tailor was to catch him a wild boar that made great havoc in the forest, and the huntsmen should give him their help. Willingly, said the tailor, that is child's play. He did not take the huntsmen with him into the forest, and they were well pleased that he did not for the wild boar had several times received them in such a manner that they had no inclination to lie in wait for him. When the boar perceived the tailor, it ran on him with foaming mouth and wetted tusks, and was about to throw him to the ground. But the hero fled, and sprang into a chapel which was near, and up to the window at once, and in one bound, out again. The boar ran after him, but the tailor ran round outside and shut the door behind it, and then the raging beast, which was much too heavy and awkward to leap out of the window, was caught. The little tailor called the huntsmen thither that they might see the prisoner with their own eyes. The hero, however, went to the king, who was now, whether he liked it or not, obliged to keep his promise, and gave his daughter and the half of his kingdom. Had he known that it was no warlike hero, but a little tailor who was standing before him, it would have gone to his heart still more than it did. The wedding was held with great magnificence and small joy, and out of a tailor a king was made. After some time, the young queen heard her husband say in his dreams at night, Boy, 
make me the doublet and match the pantaloons, or else I will wrap the yard measure over your ears. Then she discovered in what state of life the young lord had been born, and next morning complained of her wrongs to her father and begged him to help her get rid of her husband, who was nothing else but a tailor. The king comforted her and said, Leave your bedroom door open this night, and my servant shall stand outside, and when he has fallen asleep shall go in, bind him, and take him on board a ship which shall carry him into the wide world. The woman was satisfied with this, but the king's armour-bearer, who had heard all, was friendly with the young lord and informed him of the whole plot. I'll put a screw into that business, said the little tailor. At night he went to bed with his wife at the usual time, and when she thought that he had fallen asleep, she got up, opened the door, and then lay down again. The little tailor, who was only pretending to be asleep, began to cry out in a clear voice, Boy, make me the doublet and patch me the pantaloons, or I will wrap the yard measure over your ears. I smote seven at one blow. I killed two giants, I bore away one unicorn, and caught a wild boar, and am I to fear those who stand outside the room? When these men heard the tailor speaking thus, they were overcome by a great dread, and ran as if the wild huntsmen were behind them, and none of them would venture anything further against him. So the little tailor was, and remained a king, to the end of his life. And that was the beautiful tale from the Brothers Grimm. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did, and please join me for the next tale. My name's Sasha Cooper, and this has been Quarantine Kids Storytime. Take care, everybody, and stay safe out there. Bye-bye!